Greetings to you, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Today is the seventh Sunday in ordinary time in the church's liturgical calendar, year A. We are presented these readings for this Sunday's reflection. The first reading comes from the book of Leviticus chapter 19 from verse 1 to 2 and from verse 17 and 18. The psalm is from Psalm 119. The second reading comes from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 16 to 23. And we have the gospel taken from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 5 from verse 38 to 48 my dear good friends the Lord invites us today to holiness and perfection we are called to be holy we are called to be perfect in the first reading taken from the book of Leviticus, God spoke to Moses to summon all the inhabitants of Israel and they speak to them the message that they are to be holy just as he is holy. It is a call for holiness. And I want us to view this holiness in two aspects. Holiness in the aspect of relationship with God and holiness in terms of morality. Holiness implies set apart for God. Holiness in Greek language means hagios hagios it has the same meaning as the word holy in hebrew kodesh which has its root word as kadesh they all mean the same thing holy Holiness in form of relationship with God. Only God himself is perfectly holy in himself. God is holiness in himself. God impacted his holiness into us, his children. That's why he created us in his own image and likeness. So, holiness looked at in form of relationship God announced to the people of Israel to be holy because out of all the nations of the world God decided to set Israel apart for himself for him to use it to go through all the nations of the world so that is the reason why Israel is addressed as holy because they we are set apart for God. The people of God 
holy nation, Mbadenso. The people of Israel, in as much as they may have their shortcomings, they may have their weaknesses, but as far as they were set aside for God, they have that title, holy people. Holy people. And the same thing is applicable in other areas. We have holy nation, example, Israel. We have holy priesthood, sacred priesthood, the one we share in. Sacred or holy priesthood. Why is it called so? Because it is set aside, set apart from the world set aside for the work of God in relation with God or to God. We have sacred utensils or holy utensils just like the ciborium, the chalice we use at mass. They are called holy because they are set, set aside for God, for the worship of God. That makes it holy with the blessings given to them by the priest of God. They become holy utensils. We have holy vestments. The vestments that priests use in celebration of holy mass, they are holy vestments. The stove, the arm, and the rest of them. And then you see that we have Holiness attributed to inordinate objects. We have holiness attributed to objects. Holiness is not only attributed to human persons. And uh, you know, we have to embrace holiness because holiness is the identity of God. That was the reason why when Isaiah saw the holiness of God in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 6 he, he lamented oh God woe unto me because I am not holy I live among people of unclean lips he shouted holy 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 unto God because he has seen the holiness of God which we are called to share in now, the area of morality is another aspect of holiness. And that area is what St. Paul presented to us in the second reading. He called to our consciousness for us to know our identity. For us to know that we are holy people. He started by telling us, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? If our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, our body is called to holiness because the Holy Spirit cannot inhabit in an unholy body. This is the reason why we are called to have this holiness in relationship with God and holiness in living a good life. The life of God, the life of love, the life of justice, the life of equity, the life of fairness, the life of embracing the commandments of God. In the aspect of morality, that is the area where we have to embrace the commandments of God. You should not steal. You should not commit adultery. You should not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Many other things. These are the things that we can summarize in the aspect of morality. Holiness in the aspect of morality. And embracing holiness entails living a life that is ordained by God. Holiness. We are called to be holy. We are called to be perfect. Just like we had in the gospel. The gospel 
made mention of so many things because it is the extension of the the, the sermon on the mount. Jesus continued to speak and preach and teach the people, the followers, so that they will know their identity. Because if they we are not taught, if they we are not preached to, they will not remember. They may not remember. They will forget their identity. And so he continued to say, you should forgive one another. You have heard that you should love your, your neighbor and hate your enemies. But Jesus gave us the mandate to go on loving everybody, even our so-called enemies. Love them and pray for them. This is an assignment. We are given this assignment by God so that we will continue to run this race for our salvation. It is a daily struggle. Do not give up. You have to accept the assignment given to us by God. Assignment of holiness, assignment of perfection. Remember in the book of Genesis, when God created the world, created everything, he said that everything he created was good, including human persons, created in his own image and likeness. But he made it open. One can gain holiness, one can lose holiness, one can gain perfection, one can lose, lose perfection. So this assignment given to us by God makes it new in our heart to continue to seek for God, to continue to seek to keep the commandments of God, to continue to relate, have a relationship with God. Because if we don't have this assignment given to us by God, one day we will forget about God, we will forget about Jesus, we will forget about going to church, we will forget about accepting the teachings and instructions given to us by God through the church. You see? So do not jettison the instructions given to you through the church. This is the reason why the church is very important. Never you turn your back against the church. Never you abandon the church. Because God instituted the church through our Lord Jesus Christ to be an avenue to teach the people, to be an avenue to shepherd the flock the people of God, the holy people of God. It is this openness to holiness and perfection that made it imperative for us to continue to struggle because we are not finished products. God gave us the opportunity to improve ourselves because we have what is called human freedom. That liberty makes us free. And with that freedom, we are liable to judgment. Without freedom, nothing like judgment on the last day. So we have to look up to Jesus, emulate him. It is through the grace of Jesus, through the grace of God, that we will be able to maintain holiness in and under Christ. When people ask me, why do you answer innocent? Are you innocent? I, talk, I normally tell them, I make effort to be innocent. I struggle to be innocent. Nevertheless, I put myself under the innocence of Christ. Because Christ is innocent. Christ has revealed us who believe in him. As he has won the whole world, According to John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, Fear not, I have conquered the world. So also I put myself under the power and the victory of Christ to say the same thing that I have conquered the world under Christ. So do not be afraid of being holy. Do not be afraid of making effort to be perfect. God has called us to make effort to be holy, to be perfect. If there is anybody, a friend, a brother, a sister, who hates you because of your holiness? Who hates you because of your, your making effort to be perfect? 
you know that that person is not a very good person to you. If the person is a friend, push the person aside because he will pull you down. We are called to be holy. It's a divine assignment. Make effort and help others to be holy. Make effort to be perfect. That is the conclusion of the gospel of this Sunday. Be you perfect, for I, the Lord your God, am perfect. Go through the families in our world today. Crisis everywhere. Go to our society. Crisis everywhere. Enmity, enmity. Go to countries of the world. Injustice, hate, racism, here and there. It is by this consciousness of holiness and perfection that we will be able to conquer. It is difficult to be holy. It is difficult to be perfect. But having the identity of Christ in us, remembering what Christ has done for us, we put ourselves under him in order to do what he told us to do. Remember, you have to forgive your brother. You have to forgive your sister. Those who have erred against you, those who have offended you, have an open heart. Forgive them. Remember you go to confession. At the confessional, the priest representing Christ will hear your confession, all the sins you have committed, and he will give you advice and give you penance and absolve you from your sins and tell you to go, do not sin again. Just like Christ tells people. So, if Christ forgives our sins in the confessional, what is the thing that is holding you to forgive your brother? What is the thing that is holding you to forgive your sister? What is that thing that is making you to have grudges in your heart against your, your family, against your community, against one another? See what the first reading says. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17 says, do not bear a grudge against anyone, but settle your differences with him so that you will not commit a sin because of him. You see? So, if you do not forgive those who offend you, you are, you are committing a sin by bearing grudge. And know you that those who bear grudges and they die in bearing grudges, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because Jesus told us last Sunday, Thou shalt not kill. But I am telling you now that if you look at your brother and hate him and call him a fool, that you have killed. So we have to wake up from our deep slumber. We have to talk holy. We have to act holy. We have to dress holy. We have to do everything in holiness. Let our house be holy. Let our body be holy. Let our relationship with people be holy. Let our affairs be holy. Let our businesses be holy. Let everything we do have a mark of holiness because that is the mark of God. In relating with God, having rapport with Him, we become more holy. Did you? Can you remember the last time you go to church? The last time you went to church? Can you remember? If you have not gone to church, let this reflection ginger you, increase the zeal in you, fan into flame what God has given to you. Do not backslide. Do not give up. Uphold the assignment given to you and I. Assignment of holiness. Assignment of perfection. Perfection does not mean you should be judging every other person blindly. Make your own effort. Advise others, but do not judge them. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And so may the Almighty God bless you.
the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you.